So don't run out of batteries. So if you walk through this part, make sure you're you're feeling agile and can leap over cords. Yep. Don't trip. Hey Siri, next slide. <laughs> That's not going to work. <laughs> this first slide took me the longest. Yeah. Yep. Hey, got the shirt. So everybody who comes to my talk gets a shirt. You just see me after the talk and I'll hook you up. Um, so the, here's what I just, it just drives me nuts. Like, there's one of those things in life that I just hate more than anything else is when the dang little cursor won't go away. It happens all the time. Like, even if I tuck it into the corner, it's going to be still there. Like, you can see it. It's right freaking there. All right, whatever. I'm going to try and not think about it. Okay, well, here's my dog. All right. I know, isn't he cute? <laughs> <laughs> it's not my dog, it's the uh, unsplash. <laughs> but everybody loves dogs. When you put a dog slide up, everybody you know, thinks you're great. So, um, so the title of my talk, as I just had up, is The Death of Child Themes? Question mark meaning, maybe it's not. Um, but it is the death of child themes for me, in the, at least currently. Uh, I'm starting to think that maybe I don't need them anymore. Um, how many people know what a child theme is here? Raise your hand. Okay, so most of us have some knowledge of child themes, but in case anybody doesn't, um, so in WordPress, when you make a theme, or when you use a theme, uh, often you want to, you want 99% of what the theme does, but you need it to do a little bit more. Maybe you need it to have a little bit more styling like a different color or a different font or maybe uh, the layout has to be different or maybe there's a function um, that uh, you want to add something that might like filter something that somebody's trying to upload to the site and make sure that it's not uh, infected with a virus or something or maybe you want to put some google analytics on your page so that would be something where you would add the script file or the um, javascript Oh, hey, I'm going to wait for everybody, because now yeah. I just got a crowd. This we is were awesome. <laughs> so you all missed the picture of my dog, which I'm going to put back up. Can we go back? The Google dog. Yeah. I know. He says hi. Ro Rover says hello. Um, all right, so yeah, we uh, use a child theme because we want to add these special things but um, we know that if we add them to the theme that we're using uh, and we go to our WP admin and we see that the theme has been updated and we update the theme, all of those things are going to be destroyed. They're not going to be there. Your, your Google Analytics, your style that you added in, um, your functions or your PHP, your JavaScript, those things are just gone. So, oh man, what, ha what just happened? All your work just got lost. And that's why you use child themes. So, um, e-commerce customization. E customization. Yeah, you need to be able to add theme to fold folders and files to the theme, but you don't want them to be destroyed when the theme gets updated. Uh, very, very useful concept and commonly used throughout WordPress, and something that has absolutely changed, at least for me, since the emergence of FSE. So, how many people know what FSE is or have heard of that? That N acronym. Uh huh, okay. So most of us, or some of us. So FSC is um, a hot term right now in WordPress. It means full site editing. Um, for the longest time, being a WordPress user meant logging in and going to a, what's, uh, 
a tiny MCE, if that's something familiar with you, it's like a, a it's a it's the classic editor. It looks like a box with some bold icons at the top, and you could type stuff in there, and you could highlight it and make it bold. But it really wasn't like seeing what your website looked like. You had to kind of get an idea of what it would be, hit publish, go to another tab, and load the page, and refresh, and say, oh wait, no, that's in the wrong place. And then you go back to your editor and you try to do something a different way. And then you go back and you hit refresh. Oh, well, that looks closer. Let's try it. What people want is to not do that. They want to go in and say they want something bold and aligned to the right. They want to see it as they're doing it. And then when they publish it, it looks exactly the same. And this concept is known as WYSIWYG. And as far as I can remember, we've always thought about what WYSIWYG meant in terms of editing on a computer. What you see is what you get. Uh, so I think of full site editing, it's the same idea. It's what you see is what you get. You want to see what you're doing as you're doing it. Um, another term that comes up a lot is the idea of no code edit, or no code web development. So that you can be a web developer and make websites that somebody else needs or a designer has designed without ever using or touching code. And those are like utopian concepts. Everybody will, would love for that to be a possibility. But it just never has. WYSIWYG has always been what you see is what you think you'll get until you hit refresh. It's not very um, reliable. Um, so the full site editing, I should have, you know, these, these slides are kind of thrown together. So I should have said that full site editing is an idea that came about in WordPress 5.8. We're now in 6.1, almost on the dawn of 6.2. So it's a growing concept, it's a growing technology. But the bottom line is that something has changed in the appearance menu. When you're logged into WordPress and you look in appearance, you'll see that the word editor appears. And that's where full site editing lives. Um, you might have heard, I'm sure you've heard, well, I don't know, maybe not, Gutenberg. Um, any takers on that one? The block editor. I think those are all really the same thing as full site editing. But maybe I'm wrong. Part of my talk is so that I can say things that are just wrong, and then somebody in the group is going to go, yeah, that's not true. Because that makes the thing more of a learning experience for all of us. Because it's new for me, too. I am banging my head against the wall with some of these ideas. And I'm going to, and you'll he hear me do that in this talk. Um, OK, so tied in with this full site editing thing is this new file that's in modern themes or block themes called theme.json. JSON stands for JavaScript Object Notation. And uh, it's required for a theme to be considered a block theme, I think. Um, JSON, this is how you say it. Sounds cool. Otherwise, you'll say JSON and people will look at you sideways. Looks sort of like that green stuff over there, which doesn't look like JavaScript, or doesn't look like HTML if you've ever written HTML. It doesn't look like CSS if you've written CSS. It looks like something much more abstract, at least to me. All these colons and these brackets, and there's you know, indentation levels and commas, and it's just weird. Um, but it's something that I've been trying to wrap my head around, because I know if I want to keep using WordPress, I need to figure this, figure this thing out. Um, all, what I do know about theme.json is it is a way of Relaying the overall general default layout of your website, uh, including what sections are in your website, what colors, what typefaces, um, what the spacing units are, um, and that you can list the templates that you want to use. Has anybody ever created a custom template for a theme? Right, okay. So you create a new page, and you go down to that drop down menu, and it has. Um, templates and you can choose one that you want it to lay out like. And maybe in that custom template you have a sidebar or maybe you have three columns. That's gone because you do that in your JSON file using this templates, which is somewhere in this giant pile of JSON over there. And if you have parts to your, you know, like you've had, you know, the, the header.php file, if you make a, um, a footer.php file, sidebar.php file, those are now template parts. So those are things that are getting defined in the theme.json file. So there's a lot to learn about the way themes are being built. And, um, and I just was kind of putting it off. Like I'm trying to get, get in and really study it. But 
uh, I just thought, okay, well, let's get started with full site editing. Um, and then I did that, I realized that this themes.json was killing my child theme development workflow. And that's why I thought, I can do a talk and we'll see if we can figure this out together. Uh, and that's what this is about. So I've been running around like a madman um, doing too many things in the last week, which is when, usually when I put slides together. And then I thought, oh man, I, we had to do this talk. So at first I was like, let's use Jack, check GPT and chuck one together. Uh, and then my friend Adrian said, just present that use case. And that, that's a really not great picture of, I, I just, like everything else I've done, ranked it out really quick. But I think it's a good idea. Why don't I tell you how I got to this point where I'm so frustrated with uh, theme.json and child themes and everything else. So let's say the backstory here. Um, so I have a friend and they needed a website and I like helping out. So I said, Cheryl, let's make your website. And I thought, you know, how can I make this useful for me? Because yeah, I'm not gonna charge them, but I do wanna learn to me that that's a good trade off. So I said, let's do it. Let's tr see if I can become a no code theme developer and I can make this theme entirely using the block editor, using Gutenberg, using full site editing, because that's the promise. So let's see if it can deliver. And uh, not going to touch any code, not going to write any of that garbledy book over there. So I got started. Um, and, I, you know, I'm cruising around in the uh, full site editor. And I'm going to pull this full site editor up at part, as part of this in, at the end. But I, I got the hang of it. I figured out where you could change colors of your uh, background, your foreground. I could figure out where you could choose different fonts. Although that, that kind of got me when I did the fonts part. I was like, something's wrong here. Um, but I worked on the templates. I added the, um, I changed the way the header should be so that I'd have a navigation on one side and a logo on the other side. And it seemed like it was working okay and I was learning and it was going great. And then the fonts thing came back. Um, I was looking at the fonts where in the full site, and I will show you this, when you go to the what's called the global styles for the entire website, there is text. And under the text, there's a choice of fonts. And I said, what is this? Like a font menu that you can pick a different font for your website. And there was six fonts in there. And I'm like, something's really fishy here. Like this just doesn't make sense. Like there should be, you know, like in Microsoft Word where you've got Verdana and Arial and all the other garbage fonts that come in the computer. Or there should just be, like a place to type in the name of the font, or maybe there could be like a way to pick a Google font. Uh, but I just was confused by that. Um, and I was thinking, well, no, I'm not going to look in the theme edit file editor. I'm not going to look inside that theme folder. I don't want to know what's in there. I want to see if I can do this 100% with ever not touching it. Um, I thought, okay, so how can I do this? Well, I could do it using a plugin. Plugins can do everything. I went on Google and I just said, you know, full site editor, uh, Google font picker, and there's a bunch. Um, but I hate using plugins if I, unless I absolutely have to. So with that in mind, I said, okay, well, I don't see another way to get the custom font on this person's site. They wanted this person specific font. It wasn't one of the five, of course it wasn't one of the five, six fonts. Who uses those fonts? Nobody. Um, <laughs> I don't know, probably some people. But I think, you know, people, they want, they want Arial, they want, you know, Times New Roman, they want Papyrus and Comic Sans. But they don't ever say, oh, let's see if, what it looks like in IBM Plax Mono. I've never even heard of those, these fonts. So I said, okay, well, I guess I got to do a child theme. There's no way I can keep my hands off the code at this point. So it's failed me in a way. Like, it's not there. It's not ready for production, at least the way I use it. Um, so I built a child theme. Um, now, child themes are not hard to make. You just create a new folder and you put some code in there. But if you can actually remember that code word by word, which I can't, great, good for you. I just use this thing, childthemegenerator.com. You hit it, you make a new child theme, you tell it what the parent theme should be, and your folder's there. You put it in your themes folder, and you're off and running, which works great. So, um, First thing I did was I, I said, okay, well, I, I need to uh, 
add the code to, to get the font in, because they wanted to use a font, let's say, I don't remember what it was, it was probably Poppins, but I don't think I'd use that for this demo. But anyway, I looked at the style sheet, and this is what's in the style sheet. But this doesn't seem right, because I'm looking at this 2020, I use 2023 as my base theme, which is the one that comes with WordPress when you install it. And 2023 has, it's pretty barren, but it has some styling. There's different size fonts. The fonts are not like, it doesn't look like, you know, um, has, what's that website? It's uh, the one that's super, super, like, no, nothing in it. Uh, it has like a curse word in the name. Casting website. What is it? <laughs> I know that one. Anyways, it, I thought it was going to be, you know, just ugly and barren and nothing there. I'll, I'll think of it and we'll pull it up later and giggle about it. I can't remember. It's not that, though. It's like an effing, so you wanted an effing website. Here it is. Um, it's it's acceptable website or it's a, no, not it's mobile friendly. And it's just like no style sheet at all. So, uh, so it was, I thought it would look like that, but it doesn't. It has style, it has structure, it has scale, spacing. It's a nice look. I mean, if you like brutalist kind of looking websites, it looks okay. But there's no styles. There's no styles in the style.css file. And so, how does that happen? Where are those styles coming from? Because if you don't have a CSS file, how are you making this stuff happen? And that's where. This is not how I used to think about making websites. I didn't think about it the way we are supposed to be thinking about it. So and I said, is, okay. There is no style.css in the <coughs> theme that, yeah, that you're working with? There, just there is, says, but there's nothing in it. There's no, 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 no. That's the child inheriting the style from the parent. Right. right. So in the parent, so in 2023, if you open style.css, there's nothing. There's just like the, the gray text, the, the comments, you know, about the name of the theme and where it's located and what version and all this stuff. But there's none of this. This is the this is the you know the goodies right down here. That's where it all happens. So I thought, okay, well I guess I have to edit the style sheet and I put in some code to get Roboto Flex to be imported from Google. So you go to Google Fonts, you find the font you want, you hit import or you know, download font, it gives you this code, copy, paste, put it in your CSS, refresh your page. Okay, not refresh your page. So I put the CSS in. I then went into the dashboard, switched over to the appearance panel, went to my themes, and chose the 2023 child theme that I had generated with the child theme generator. Thinking, great, okay, now I should be able to use my wonderful Roboto Flex. And uh, does it work? Well, not really, because Everything that I had done with the template part customization, putting the navigation on the right, the logo on the left, changing my background color, changing my foreground color to something more brand oriented, was gone. Like, that made no sense to me. Like, why would that happen? So, I. Because I'm using a child theme, but the child theme should inherit. Oh, not, not that, bad, not custom settings. Right, why not? If that's all. That's the purpose of so it all inherit the core theme stuff, but then it's like you just install a brand new theme. The database, if you switch back all that stuff that you did, it's still on the parent theme, but it's not stored in the database for the child theme. In any case, okay. You, what you're so saying is probably true. Yeah, and I don't want to be right. And that's part of my whole brain melt. So what about happened. recalling a style sheet from the header.php? The style sheet that you created, since the original theme's not using it. But if you add calling the style sheet to the header.php, then it will. True too. Um, all I know is that this was the behavior. This was not the behavior I expected. I thought for sure that any edits that I had done in the site editor would be maintained because all I'm doing with this child theme is importing a single. There's nothing that I'm doing other than importing a single font, and that's it. But all of my styles have been thrown out the window. So that, to me, didn't make any sense. And it still doesn't. Um, and I'm, I'm going to pull up and just so you can see it, we'll do it live after I'm done with this. I thought, okay, well, what if I do this? I'm going to copy the theme.json file. Because in the child theme, there was no theme.json file. All there was was the functions.css. Or the functions.php and the style.css file. 
So what if I bring over the theme.json file and, and I'll make a copy, exact copy from 2023, and put it in my child theme, 2023 child. And it didn't matter. It didn't matter. It still didn't retain any of my custom work. So the only thing that I could do was to switch back to the um, parent theme, 2023, and as far as the custom font goes, I ended up using plugin because you know I gave up at that yeah. point. Um, so what's the you know the I guess I could have taken the child's themes folder and edited that to I don't know, just ignore that because um, the way the way we, we're dealing with fonts now is really really weird when it comes to full site editing. You have to download the font, you have to install it, or you have to serve it locally. Yep. which is totally new. Never before did you have to do that with your, your themes. You could just refer to, out of the box, you could refer to a, a, a Google font and import it. But now they have to be served locally. Maybe that's a good thing. That's a different story, different rant. Depends on the font. Um, so what's my conclusion? It's that child themes don't inherit global style. Well, I'm going to show you what global styles are, in case it's still confusing. Um, and it doesn't matter whether or not you include a theme.json file. So, it, so why do you even do it? Well, you do a child theme in modern full site editing because right up front you know that you're going to need additional things that the WordPress core editor does not provide you with, which in my case was the ability to um, add additional fonts. There's no way to add fonts without touching code in WordPress. And that to me is something that hopefully will change. It seems like a no-brainer that you would want that if you want to present your your uh, technology as something that does a no takes a no code or full site editing or WYSIWYG approach to developing a website. Um, now all of these things I am happy to be proven wrong about and I'd love to get people's opinions or knowledge because I think that this is a group thing. Maybe we have an issue here that we can bring up in WordPress and, and maybe this is something that we can improve WordPress by doing. Um, this was kind of a relevant quote I was searching around uh, and that the idea of child themes that they really won't, this particular quote, that they won't make a ton of sense because they likely won't be much shared code between to the two once the theme.json is even more robust with what it supports. I'm not totally sure what that means, but kind of mimics my idea that maybe child themes are not going to be around. Yeah. Yeah, I was just thinking you can the the current way to, to get in custom fonts is to use the create block theme plugin from the WordPress.org um, theme pack. And that will kind of give you a menu item for to choose from a Google fonts or any local fonts and kind of give you a preview. I did that tech actually what you oh, just yeah. said I did install that and I and I created a plug uh, I'll show you I created the theme for this demo so and I'll pull the switch that over. And it probably didn't stay right that and the switch and it probably it did not stay yeah, yeah it doesn't stay um, yeah all right did you use cool pen for this no uh, for for my what I was no okay so I used um, to do all this locally I used a program called Local, uh, and then I used um, to do uh, yeah any testing. But I just used Local, and I'll I'll show you that. I'll pull that up. Yeah. Okay. So any I have another slide, but it's fine. Let me pull my last one up, and then you can sure. um, <laughs> just for the reading. So yeah, this is a, a really good article. If any of this stuff is confusing, this is going to help you um, by Carolina. Uh, Nymark, who seems to know everything there is to know about what my questions are. Um, I've read this article several times and it's helped quite a bit. If you're interested in learning more about how a block based theme works, and in particular if you did use a child theme with your block based theme, um, what kind of things you should be aware of. Still doesn't answer all my questions though. So, um, what was your question? Oh, I, I just wanted to touch on a point you raised in one of your last slides where you said that, that child themes don't inherit global style. But I don't think I think that that's, that's not, not true. That's not really true. I, I think once you install the child theme, it should 
necessarily inherit everything. I think the experience that you had is you went and you made some customizations in the editor, then you switched theme for the child theme, and once you switched over, uh, like this gentleman made the point of, it's considering that, okay, now you've got a new theme, but it didn't, it, any of the customizations that you made in the editor didn't get moved over. Right. To that theme. But if you had switched to the child theme first and made your edit, then everything would have gone well. Right, that's my conclusion, is that you can't, you have to do it right away, yeah. which is, Counter to how styles.css works. Yeah, in styles.css, you can make a child theme whenever you want and just put that one single style and it appends it to your style sheet from the parent. Let me ask you a question. Which, that's why I was confused. Yeah. So you created the, the child theme by using a plugin, basically, or a, a website that generated the code for yes. that particular child theme. But maybe the way child themes work has changed. So is there different files that you than the standard ones mm -hmm. like functions I, ID. I think more of the confusion is coming around using an editor versus styles.css. Right. So the editor, when you go into the customizer and you're making changes, those changes are saved in the database and associated with the theme that you have activated at that time. That's right, yeah, absolutely. Um, and, and then when you change themes, those are now associated with your active theme. If you put styles in the theme in the child style.css, then those themes are definitely going to work for it. Um, the tricky and part Any of styles that are in the parent theme and in parent theme styles.css, you're inheriting all of those. Um, with, right. Without doubt. Um, but the ones that are made inside of WordPress in the editor, in the customizer, those are the ones that are nebulous, I guess, or how would you want to say? Yeah. In the customizer, though, there are certain ones that do transfer with the is that yeah. True? yeah, so if you change your site title, oh, your site logo and stuff, that's all you know, yeah. and it's all mixed together. Yeah, which that's, 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 that's the point. Yeah, more. because if you upload your logo, it would be switched into your logo, too, yeah, same, right? Right. Even, even beyond this whole, you know, whether or not the style CSS works or not works, because you can make it work, like I said, if you throw the, the call to that style sheet in the header, but even beyond that, you need the child theme to be able to do customizations like we mentioned with WooCommerce and that kind of thing. So you're still going to need a child theme. It just may not have all of the utility for some of the things you're used to having the utility for. Yeah. You need to actually do some, probably be, you would probably use a style variation um, within, you can do that within the theme, but obviously you want to um, put your customizations in a child theme. You have a styles directory and then creating new uh, .json files to make whatever you want. And that would be your style variation. And then you can start uh, pulling in the fonts and stuff like that. Because mm -hmm. um, the, the new theme.json API is just an abstraction of they're, they're trying to merge theme styles, WordPress core styles, and then user styles. Mm -hmm. And they're trying to take those three entry points manipulate them so that they're always up to date and merging, taking, you know, there's an order of priority obviously. So when you go into that site editor and make some customizations, you're applying user styles and those will persist in the database, but they'll be associated with the, the theme that you have currently active. But don't you think that if you create a child theme, it should respect those global styles? That to me, if I make a completely different theme, I, I get it. I don't expect my styles to carry over. That's but certainly an ongoing discussion. Yeah, I think it's, there are some people. Some people do. I, I'm not sure. I, I, I can go both ways. You can. I mean, the, for me right now, the answer is that don't even think about it. Just make that child theme right off the bat. Yeah. You have to do that because as soon as you get to the point where you need to make a child theme and you've done a bunch of work in that editor, you're screwed. And I was screwed. I had to go back and do it all over again. I had to do it for another site too. So I've lost a lot of time on this, and so I got, uh, like, when I thought of the idea for my talk, whenever it was, I was in the middle of that, and I'm like, God, this whole new workflow is just different. Like, I, don't, I didn't have to worry about it. I don't want to make a child theme unless I absolutely have to. I don't want to do anything unless you've actually forced me to do it, like a plugin or like, um, what's another thing? Like a, uh, anything, you know, any kind of development I'm doing, if I don't have to do it, I won't. So, um, but in this case, it seems like I don't know until I get into my, until I get further along into the development of the site, whether I'm going to need a child theme. So I better just make one right up front. Or I'm, I'm 
going to be shooting myself in the foot. So that was that was my rant. Now, I can show you if anybody's confused about some of the words, the editor, the global editor, what theme down just on is. Um, this is a, a, just a back end of WordPress on my local machine. So I'll pull it open. Um, okay, so first of all, when I mentioned under appearance, you used to see uh, more stuff here. You would see, what would you see? Uh, customize, I think. Yeah, that's gone. Menus, Menus Widgets. gone. Widgets, gone. It's all gone. There's themes in editor. You have, it's because, yeah, you stumbled upon the registration of themes. Yeah, this is just the 2023. This is just 2023, right. So they didn't register that. So I'm going to go to editor. So, right, so, so once we go to that editor, we see templates and template parts, and these things are defined in that theme.json file. Like if you click these and you read these words, you can actually find those if you search in your theme.json file. Same with the template parts. These are in there. So go to the header. So, um, sure. So header. So yeah, this is the kind of thing that I was doing. Like, okay, I want to I put a logo here instead of the word demo. So I go and edit this, and I you know, hit the block, and I get an image. I don't even know if I have an image in here. Oh, there's a, right, there is a logo block, yeah. I'd have to upload something. Right, let's put this in there. Here's my, here's my image I want to put. Uh, yeah, okay, whatever. We're, we're getting silly here. Let me go back. Yeah, but so this is the kind of stuff I was doing before I made the child theme. But if, you, if you call to the CSS, the style.css with the child theme in this header, will that work? The child theme CSS is called at the end of everything else. So anything you put in the child theme.css, the style.css would necessarily override anything else that comes before it. It's called a, at the very end. So anything in the parent theme gets overridden, anything, you know, plugins get overridden. So just add that line. So anyways, if I go to, this is the global style editor. It's under styles. It looks like, a, um, you know those cookies that have chocolate on one side and vanilla on the other? It looks like that. Yeah, click on the wrong part of the U.S. Black and white. Black and white. Yeah, they're delicious. Yeah, they don't have them a lot around here. I don't find them, but anyways. Linzer cookies either. Um, so here we see the, uh, the style, the global style editor. And this is where, you know, I was doing things like, I wasn't doing it with the child theme, I was doing it with the parent theme, and I was like, okay, let's get rid of these um, colors, like, yuck. Um, can we find something a little more uh, along their brand, or whatever it was, and you save it, and great, and wonderful. One thing you can do is to operate the three dots, so you can export your email. We were saying that, yes. You get a t-shirt, because that's what I should have done. Yeah, I got t-shirts for you. Actually, I told everybody you get a t-shirt. But um, no, okay, that's actually what we were saying. Did you, you mentioned that, Andy. Can you export them? And we didn't know. So now we know that this is what we would do. I wonder what that file looks like, but I don't want to get any deeper into the code. Um, let me pull open the... Um, the I'm curious too. It, it, it exports the entire. And you're going to get 2023, and then the theme.json can be modified with some new entries. That's about it. So you would take that theme.json, put it into a child theme, and you would style the directory oh, oh, oh. as a child variation. Essentially. Oh, get out of here! Oh, oh snap! Okay. All your customization time that you did. Oh yeah. Okay, so now I can just keep. Plowing ahead and say, actually, like if you like that file you built and had like you know the previous six fonts, mm -hmm. you could take one of those fonts away, and then, but then you still have to come in and activate this style variation. If you do. Oh really? Okay. Well, maybe I'll play around with that. Um, if you know, so if you go where the style variation, if you go back to the site editor. Mm -hmm. Icon next to the half moon, and there's um, oh, no, actually, we're, we're in the right place. Sorry, yeah. If you click on 
browse dialed in any key image there. That's where the style variation you want to see any change. Once um, you added yours to the child theme, it would show up here and then you could switch over to that. Okay. Wow. I'm sure it works and uh, I mean I, I would I don't even feel like I need to demo that by exporting it and and opening it because that makes total sense. So I would import here now let's say so how would I import the exported theme? Would it you would take you would create a child theme and then do a styles directory and drop the theme.json that got exported into there. And I would probably rename it. I don't know if it'll show up, but I would call it whatever. Then then dot JSON and then it will show up as a variation here called that. So so this exported the zip file, twenty twenty three child two. Let me let me put proof of concept here. I'm gonna go in and see if this what this does exactly. So here's my demo themes. I got 2023, 2023 child, and now here's the export, unzipped export file, 233 child two. And let's see if it what well, what did I do? Did I, did I really do the same name? Yeah, you're right. This could Maybe be bad. Or you have the same name and style.css, you gotta go to the theme. I think. I'm gonna toss this one. I actually, I wouldn't. You still want the child header in the style.css. I want to see 2023 as my parent and still do that. Oh. Okay, I'm totally lost. <laughs> so, so do you hey, let's start over yeah. here. Let's start over. I'm going to go from scratch. We're going to go back and delete all these extra themes because who cares, right? We're going to switch back to 2023 Activate. And we're going to delete um, this one here. Wait, theme details. We're going to delete. Just let me do it my way for a second. <laughs> well, I can't Delete. We're going to break it. All right. So here we go. Themes were active in the 2023. We're going to go to editor. A little customized. That's annoying. But anyways. Okay. So look at this. I was playing around earlier. I made the text, text green. And, you know, I did through the cookie. And I went to the colors in the background. Let's make it dark. And we'll save. Okay. Great. Save. So now we've got our theme, we're going to export it and see if we can import it as a child theme as a proof of concept. So we're going to go to the drop. I think what he was saying, don't you just want the theme.json? Yeah, I mean, export it and move that over. Really, you want it, I saw that you had to create class theme as well. That is really the way to go these days. And mm -hmm. Right now, if you went into the menu for create class theme, you can just export this theme. Okay, well, let's. Or you can create a child. It gives you all the options. That's really the best way. Well, okay, let's delete that block, that thing then. Because this could, I'm trying to like reduce the very. So I un I did have it, but then I removed it because I knew it was going to cause confusion. Can I ask you a point though for, for yeah. part of this? Because the part of, the part of um, creating the child theme is because you don't want your changes to be overwritten. But these changes that you're doing as part of this 2023 theme aren't going to be overwritten when the theme is up. These are just settings within the theme. Right. So the point of the child theme becomes for other customizations, not for these specific styles of the website. Right. Yes. So that's what I mean, though. Like, so do we need a, do we need to do any styling in our CSS files? Like, I think we still need a child theme, but maybe not for that part. Right. Not for not for styling. Right. I think there's a Okay, that's good to know. So that was WP code. WP code is the name of one. This is, there's there's yeah. a bunch of different snippet managers essentially, but there's a the, that, that allows you to add and, and WP code is pretty smart actually. You can target certain pages if you only want it as 
uh, you know, JavaScript in the design to improve, uh, you can say, okay, run in this page or, or not. Cool. And that, that'll keep you out of having to, you know, make a whole trial for you. So you have to include that to file the design. Yeah. So the problem I have with that is that you kind of have to start a theme with that. Because if you're if you're working on a theme that already exists that has functions about PHP and stuff like that, then you're just fighting with where somebody put changes to the other two different things. Okay, so I'm I'm just gonna step back here. I made my edits to my 2023 theme. I'm in the editor and I'm going to the three dots and I'm gonna choose export. And I'm gonna see if I can get this child theme. So 2023.zip, I'll double click it. Okay, so I have a folder here called 2023. I probably need to change the name. I'll add child to the end. And you tell me if I'm doing this, oh, come on. I mean, there's a few ways to go about it. You can just take rename and not make it a child if you don't want to. And it's gonna have everything and just activate it. Yeah, right. Is it, is it a child theme? No, I mean, right now, Let's check. Let me check. Go check to change the, the name. Of oh, the yeah, the slug is about that. Yeah. 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 All right, so here's 2023.2, which was the export. And let's take a look. And. Yeah, so this is not a child theme. This is a normal, straight up theme. Um, right, so change it back where you just were a second. Change the name of the theme. 2023 uh, version 2. So, I, I, uh, uh, before I do that, let me just try this. Going back into my theme, uh, my WP themes, and is it there? 2023, and then here's 2023 2. What is it? Yeah, dash 2. I'll activate 2023 2. And let's see if it remembers. Because if I just made the child the way I'd done previously, and it remembers. And it's not a child theme. It's just its own normal theme. So that's, but then you don't get the advantage of, say, 2023 gets a new upgrade. You know, you don't have that. It's not the themes that would get updated and overwritten at that point. It's, mm -hmm. you, know, that's, it's, you still need a child theme part of this. So let's take a look at that create block theme. And it's by WordPress.org, so it's you know legit. And we'll activate it, and then we'll go back to the original 2023 theme. There it is. It's in a zone out here. Me too. Uh, activate this one. And then um, create block theme. Okay, okay, so here we go. Uh, we can create a child of 2023. Because wow. don't we want to do that? Because we want to, if they upgrade 2023, I want my upgrade, I want my theme to upgrade. Uh, I forget, I usually have to read all the descriptions underneath each one of those, but they explain pretty clearly. Mm -hmm. And they give you, really, there's a lot of options right there. Yeah, I, I think it's, I think it's this one. Create a child theme of 2023 because I do want to take advantage of those. Okay, so that seems like that's probably the best way to go. Sure, generate, and then oh, specify a name, theme name. I'll call it um, WordCamp Buffalo. Right here. WC buff. Okay, and I'm just going to delete all this part, this stuff. Oh, really? It won't go in there? Okay. All right, and blah, 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 yada, yada. Um, let's generate. We have a style.css an option now. I don't see it. So here's what we get. We get a style.css with, uh, come on, Safari. Why would I want to open it with Safari? 
Yeah, I added my CSS. In. Right, see, template, 2023. So it does, it does rely on the, the parent. So there, that looks like that's the way to go. And um, what? <laughs> Wait, I didn't see that. <laughs> Clone 2023. Yeah, but no, it did what I wanted, though. It did bring over yeah, the settings. Yeah, I don't think you wanted option three. Because Clone just gives me like it doesn't. It doesn't. You activate this right now, or are you? Are you going to see your black background and your green background? Yeah. Oh, good question. That's what you're trying to solve, right? Yeah, I thought I did. I guess I, I didn't activate. Yeah, see? Nope. Yeah, yeah. Wah, wah. Okay. No answer. Now, I did you see my font, yeah, though? That's when you would do the export of the, the other theme and then import it into the child theme. You can't import in this system. You, you can only export and then drag it into the themes folder. Right, but Take the important file, the JSON file, and dump it on top of the child. Yeah, that's it. That makes sense. But maybe the clone option would use that. Let's try it. So the clone option would just clone the theme, starting places. You gotta go switch to the other channel. So let's go back to 2023. All right, now when I visit my site and I refresh, it looks good. And then I go to create block theme and um, yeah, clone. Okay. Name. All right, WC buff clone. It's not going to make it a child theme, but you can do that on your own. Right. See, that's what I want. I want a child theme. I want a child theme. Well, just put template. Yeah. So I do it and see what happens. Okay. Yeah. Uh, activate. Refresh. But it's not a child theme. Just take your style of CSS. Yeah. Make that, they, make that child theme that you have. Just take, right take the themes.json and copy and paste over the top of it and see what happens. So, right here, I can. Is that a temp? Add another line that says, yeah, yeah, copy it from there. Yep. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Well, that seems like that, that's. <laughs> We're done. People go home and do this. Everybody in the world. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Good point. Let's see. Uh, okay. But this, don't you think that that should be an option then in this list on the um, create block theme? Like it should be create a, create a clone of WC of 2023 that is also a child theme. Like that's what I think. That way I don't have to create a child theme using current settings. settings. You actually want the last one. I'll create a style variation. Oh. Export just the .json and then you can drop that into the child theme. Do that as college yeah. or something, or whatever you want to call it. WC buff there. I didn't do it so much before this presentation. That's what I, right. you know, that's why I have you to <coughs> do my work for me. Now that's going to give you your file, right? Okay, so the new, okay, so it puts it in the WC buff clone styles. Um, so if you go into that again, if you delete everything, the style directory, and the style.css, so everything but what? Okay. 
Oh, is it? Yeah, 421, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. I think we've made very good progress today. <laughs> so you've all helped me. Yeah. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's break it. All right. Thanks, everyone. Come uh, see me at the hallway. Uh, in the, uh, the the happiness bar, if you want a T-shirt. So yeah. Oh, on the list there?